Now, this video is going to greatly help those who are going through stress. And I want to make this as simple as possible. You're just going to be drinking one cup of this thing I'm going to tell you in a, in a few minutes daily to bring down your stress to zero. But I first want to explain why it works. Now, I do want to say that reducing your stress to zero is not healthy for a long period of time. In fact, you can't live without some stress. Stress is actually healthy as long as it's not sustained. Our bodies become stronger when we put our bodies through stress, like exercise, for example, right? If you sat on the couch, no stress, did nothing, you would waste away. The problem is sustained stress burns out a lot of your organs. And I want to just go through that fairly rapidly. Number one, the immune system, okay? Stress, high levels of cortisol. This HPA stands for hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. So when you perceive stress through your brain, it goes through these different levels and then it comes out as cortisol. And so now your body can start adapting to stress with the help of cortisol. So cortisol kind of goes through these organs and adjusts the organs to deal with this stress. But with the immune system, <laughs> um, it basically turns off. And that makes you very susceptible to viral infections and all sorts of things. I mean, think about what happens um, when people get stressed out. A lot of times they get sick, right? And so um, stress is suppresses the immune system. So that's not a good thing. Sustained stress can create atrophy to your lymph nodes, actually shrink your lymph nodes, shrink the spleen and the thymus. That's your immune system. Okay, so stress is very bad for the immune system. Okay, so now the stomach, you can actually develop an ulcer. You can have the acid start splashing up, causing GERD. There's more gastric acid increase in the stomach. That's why you might get gastritis. The entire digestive system is controlled by the parasympathetic. That's the rest and digest. That's the opposite of this stress mechanism right here. So stress pretty much turns off the digestive system. Try to digest when you're under stress. It just doesn't work. Now, as a side note, stress also depletes you of vitamin B1, calcium, potassium, and this thing right here, H+. That's a hydrogen ion. Now, what does that mean? What is, how does that relate to anything? Well, when you're going through stress, you lose the hydrogen ion. What is the hydrogen ion? Well, you know what? You've heard of pH before, right? pH, that's the power of the hydrogen ion. So basically, this is an acid. So when you go through stress, you're jacking up cortisol, you're losing your acids. And guess what? You become too alkaline. So you would think that stress makes you acid. No, it doesn't. It makes you excessively too alkaline. And the symptoms of alkalosis are muscle twitching, hyperventilation, cramping, anxiety. Interesting. Now, stress affects the heart by increasing the blood pressure, the heart rate, and creating a constriction of the coronary artery. Stress affects the blood sugars by turning things into sugar, okay? Your fat into sugar, protein into sugar, ketones into sugar. And this is why high levels of stress can even make a person a diabetic, okay? So even though you're not eating sugar, your body is producing sugar out of other things by having too much stress because another name for this is a glucocorticoid. Now, all this sugar that's generated is basically making us fat. So if you have too much cortisol, you start developing fat, specifically around your gut, because the liver is becoming fatty and then it spills over into the gut. So you'll have belly fat. Now, the tone of the muscles become very, very rigid and tight. So you get muscle spasms. The lung has a problem. When you have high levels of cortisol, you hyperventilate, right? You're, you think that you're get, not getting enough oxygen, but you're getting too much oxygen. I did a whole video on this. It's very counterintuitive. It's very interesting. I mean, think about this. If you were to hyperventilate right now, what would happen? You would get too much oxygen and you would pass out. Too much oxygen and not enough CO2 actually locks up the ability to absorb this oxygen in the tissues. And what happens is you basically starve of oxygen. So there's some really great data on this that I did on a video. I'll put the link down below. You can watch that later. But the point is that stress throws off your lung 
and causes an inability to breathe. I mean, think about asthma, think about people during panic attacks, people that have anxiety, they're, they're trying to get more oxygen and that's making things worse. You should basically just breathe through your nose, calm your breath down, and then you'll get more oxygen, like really slowly. Now, the brain, this is the last part of this puzzle. Stress both destroys certain parts of the brain, that's why it affects your sleep, your circadian rhythms with sleep, but the perception of stress coming through the brain that's activating the cortisol is controlled by this neurotransmitter called GABA, okay? GABA is like a turn-off switch. It's like the brake pads. 50% of all the little um, synapses in your brain are a kind of combination of glutamate and GABA receptors, okay? And only 5% are dopamine and serotonin. So all you need to know for this example is GABA is very, very, very important in relationship to cortisol. It controls this excessive amount of cortisol. So when people go through excessive amount of stress over a period of time, they don't necessarily burn out the adrenals. They're burning out this neurotransmitter right here. So this remedy I'm gonna talk about inhibits GABA. It blocks the enzyme that slows down the degradation of GABA, thus increasing GABA, which turns off cortisol. So these little hormones that are coming out of hypothalamus, pituitary, down to here, are all turned off when you increase GABA, okay? And that remedy is lemon balm tea. That's right. You want to start drinking on a regular basis, lemon balm tea. It's very, very simple. You have one in the morning, maybe one in the afternoon, maybe one a little bit later. And this has certain phytonutrients to increase GABA. One of the big effects that lemon balm has over your body is it increases tranquility, right? That's a really cool word, tranquility. What does it mean? It means peaceful, serene, unshaken, unworried, so it increases your tolerance to stress. It helps you to be calm. It has properties of anti-anxiety, anti-depression. It increases and elevates your mood. It does a lot of other things, but it's really, really good for reducing cortisol. So in one study, lemon balm, which is in the mint family as a plant, created a full remission of anxiety in 70% of people who took it. And it also showed significant sleep improvements for those people who had insomnia and 85% of the people who took it. Now, there's many things you can do for stress, but lemon balm tea is one of my favorite things. It's simple. You'll feel quick effects right away. It's very inexpensive and it has a lot of additional health benefits as well that go way beyond just the stress reduction. Now, if you have not seen my video on how to do acupressure for stress, you definitely need to check that out. I put it up right here. Check it out.